Hey guys, it's Rhonda, and I have a pretty short video for you today. I just want to share one of my favorite features of Midjourney with you. It's a trick that you may not know, so I wanted to share it, especially for those of you who have recently watched our video on uh, creating the brush stroke uh, designs with Canva. Uh, this comes in handy when you are creating your panels to uh, put in each individual brush stroke. So I'm just going to show you this real quick. I'm going to copy and paste a prompt in here I have. This is create a watercolor clip art featuring an Easter basket with a baby bunny and a baby chick decorated with lace ribbons, antique floral patterns, and delicate golden accents. Use a muted color palette of soft rose, ivory, and pale gold for a vintage, timeless feel, isolated on a white background. Now, let's say I want to take this prompt and here where it says a baby bunny and a baby chicken, what if I want to do the same exact prompt? I want an Easter basket with a bunny in one image, a chick in another image, um, Easter eggs in another image, and um, say a chocolate bunny in another image for my um, brush stroke panels or for anything, all right? What I can do is I can I'm going to erase those things. All right, so now we just have like a blank subject. It just says Easter basket with a blank decorated with lace ribbons. So we are going to put in a curly bracket here. All right, and it, next to that curly bracket, what we are going to do is enter all the different things that we want to see in our basket in individual images. So I want one image with a uh, cute brown bunny and then I'm going to put a comma and I want another image with an adorable baby duckling and another with a cute baby chick and another one with colorful Easter eggs and let's say one filled with uh, Easter candy, okay? So these are all images I want to create one at a time. So now that I have all those different things in here, I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to hit the curly bracket again. So all my different subjects are right here, separated by commas, enclosed in curly brackets, all right? Now, I want to make these as panels for my brush stroke designs. So I am going to put dash dash AR916 so that they are tall images, just like the ones you see here. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And you can see right away we have a bunch of sets of images generating. There's one, two, three, four, five different sets of images. And here's our one with our baby duckling. And here's our one with our baby chick. And here are our Easter eggs. And it still gave me Easter eggs. It did not give me Easter candy. Hmm, I guess I should have been a little more specific. Let's try this again. And that's my fault, I wasn't very specific. Let's do chocolate Easter candy, all right. But, and while that's working, let's scroll down here and here is our brown bunny. So we have a image with our bunny, an image with our duck, an image with our chick, our decorated eggs, and it gave me some chocolate candy here and still some Easter eggs, which is fine. 
Um, I just, you know, might have been a little more specific with that, but you get the idea. Um, we can just put all of our subjects inside the curly brackets and it will generate all those prompts at once for us. It saves us from having to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So let me grab another prompt just so we can do this. All right, let me grab this. And this time it's a watercolor cactus, all right, wearing a small beige cowboy hat. So we have cactus. And then what if we want a cowboy or a pair of cowboy boots? Um, what else? How about a horse? And then we'll put the curly brackets around that and we will hit enter. And again, we're getting, now this isn't gonna work right because I wasn't paying attention to my colors and I just threw a horse in there, but he's gonna be a green horse. But you get the idea of what I was talking about. We're not really, actually he looks great. The horse is wearing a cowboy hat. There's a cowboy hat on top of the boots. We have a cowboy wearing a cowboy hat and we have our cactus wearing a cowboy hat. So again, you see how much time and effort using this like multi-prompt feature saves you, which is so much fun and you can just add whatever you want into your subjects and you're going to get similar results for each of the images generated because the only thing you're changing in the entire prompt is the subject. Okay, now let's take this pair of cowboy boots and let's say we want cowboy boots but we want them in different colors. So we can do light brown, pale pink, teal and let's do a blue denim and put the curly cues around it so we don't have to just change the subject we can do this with our color palettes as well so this will now generate cowboy boots in different colors for us and we have the light brown and here is our pink and this is more of your teal you know and, and it's all muted colors because that's what the prompt called for and then our blue denim so it works with more than just your subject like I said you can do it with your colors and let's grab this and how about we do some of this. We'll do uh, blue, brown, pink, green. That is our colors. And here, let's do cowboy boots and uh, let's do a horse. It's going to give us a weird colored horse. It's okay. Um, cactus and again the cowboy. How you can combo these. All right, so we have four different subjects and four different color palettes. So let's hit due to an error in one of the jobs. Which one? I don't know. Too many prompts, the limit is 10. Okay, so that is what happened there. I did too many. 
So we can do cowboy boots and then let's do cactus. So that's two. And then here we can do blue, green, pink, and mix and match that way and hit enter. And now we should be okay. There we go. That generated one, two, three, four, five different six different uh, options for us because it gave us cowboy boots in all three colors and it gave us cactuses in all three colors. All right. So like I said, you can mix and match. Um, just keep in mind that your limit is 10 total uh, variations. So make sure you keep it under that if you're doing multiple subjects and multiple color variations all right but i just wanted to show you this feature i think it's oftentimes overlooked by a lot of people they don't even realize it's there and it is very handy especially when you are generating images for something that will require um, more than one image and you want those images to be similar, right? Like our brushstroke panels. In fact, let me shoot over here quick. And just for giggles, let me get in here. All right, I have my four panels open. So let's go back over here. And let me scroll down to my tall ones. Those are the ones that I use for my panels, which would be my Easter baskets. So let me click on this, copy, drop it in, and let's grab another one here, copy, drop it in, and again, let's copy. So it makes creating these images for things of this nature very handy because each image is going to be somewhat similar. In fact, let me go back up here. Let, I didn't get a duckling and I really want a duckling. Copy. All right, so then we can drag our duck, our bunny, chick and our Easter eggs and then we'll get rid of this one so you see how quickly we were able to generate all four of our panel images using the little curly bracket um, trick or I hate to call it a hack because it's not a hack it's part of mid journey uh, using our little curly bracket feature all right um, so you can easily do them, do them really quickly. You can do it with, like I said, all kinds of prompts. Change your subject, change out your color tones, and do them quickly. All right, so I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.